But of course, we begin here with our big story. U.S. officials are saying the enemy drone that hit a U.S. base in Jordan was possibly confused with an American drone. Now, this comes as the Iranian Foreign Ministry is denying any involvement in that attack that killed three American service members. And we now know the names of those Army reservists. 46-year-old Sergeant William Jerome Rivers, 24-year-old Kennedy Landon Sanders, and 23-year-old Brianna Alexandria Moffat, all from the state of Georgia. The attack marking the first line of fire in the line of fire deaths for U.S. troops since the start of this Israel-Hamas war. President Biden vowing to retaliate as the Pentagon says the U.S. will respond at a, quote, time and place of our choosing. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin speaking sternly today about the strike during his first day back to work following his secret hospitalization. Take a listen. Let me start with my outrage and sorrow for the death of three brave U.S. troops in Jordan and for the other troops who were wounded. The President and I will not tolerate attack on U.S. forces and we will take all necessary actions to defend the U.S. and our troops. Well, for more on this, we turn now to our Deputy Pentagon Press Secretary, Sabrina Singh. Uh, Sabrina, thank you for joining us on what I know has been a very busy day for you. So let's jump right in here. Uh, in terms of U.S. response, National Security Spokesperson John Kirby also said, you know, there's no easy answer here. So Sabrina, as the Biden administration is weighing options, is a direct target inside Iran a possibility? Well, thanks for having me. Uh, look, this is something that the president is going to make a decision about with his National Security Council and his national security team on what makes the most sense when it comes to a response. And I certainly won't get ahead of the president or my boss here, um, but certainly options are on the table. We know that Iran continues to arm, equip, train, and support these IRGC militant groups that have been launching attacks in Iraq and Syria. Uh, but again, I'm not going to get ahead of the president or any decisions he's going to make. Understandable. Are, are you able to share anything in terms of how the Pentagon is advising the White House in terms of timing? No, again, as the secretary likes to say, and, and is true, we own the, we own the clock here. Um, and so it, we will respond at a time and place of our choosing when we feel we will make the most impact, uh, when we feel we will make, uh, inflict the most cause onto these Iran-backed militia groups who, of course, are responsible for the death of three of our service members just yesterday and have inflicted um, injuries to many, many more across uh, in Iraq and Syria since October 17th. Um, but it's really at a time and place of our choosing, and that's why we own the clock. Yeah, you know, you mentioned some of these uh, numbers today in an earlier press conference. Uh, they were quite staggering. You mentioned over 160 attacks on U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria since October 17th. So, Sabrina, is there any thought that the previous U.S. retaliatory strikes here in the region have been ineffective? Look, we know that every time we strike or we take dynamic strikes, uh, whether it be in Houthi-controlled areas in Yemen, whether it be in Iraq or Syria, we are wiping capabilities off the map for these groups to use again. So the capabilities, the systems, the weapons that they had access to yesterday, they don't have access to those again today because we have fully degraded or completely destroyed uh, some of what has been stored at either weapons facilities um, or, or other targets. Um, again. It is on these groups to decide when they stop their attacks, but we will continue mm -hmm. to respond and we will do so at a time and place of our choosing when we feel that it is the right time to strike. And sources have confirmed to us here at ABC that this enemy one-way attack drone was confused for a U.S. drone that was returning from the base around that same time. Sabrina, is there any guidance on how something like that could happen or where this drone originated from? Yeah, in terms of the origination, that's something that we're looking into right now. Um, Central Command is also conducting uh, an investigation into what, what happened. How did this drone uh, evade our air defenses and be able to impact at living quarters where many of our service members are, are, are live and stay? Um, so that's something that we are reviewing right now. Um, I don't have more for you at this time other than that. I'm going to let Central Command lead that investigation and figure out um, how to how to avoid these attacks in the future and prevent uh, future injuries to our service members.
I know there's so many conversations and so much uh, knowledge to be gained, and I know you'll share that with us uh, when you're able to, so I appreciate that. And, and lastly, uh, I want, I'm want i curious if you have any information here on concerns that a response by the U.S. to these Iranian attacks, uh, or these Iranian-backed militant attacks, I should say, would impact hostage negotiations that are ongoing? Well, we view these as two separate things, two separate incidences that are happening. Again, we have been very clear that we do not want to see what's happening in Gaza uh, spill out into a wider conflict in the region. Uh, we believe these can be contained into two separate events, um, what's happening in Israel and Gaza and what's happening to our service members in Iraq and Syria. Uh, we don't believe that that should impact hostage negotiations in any way. These are IRGC-backed militias that are firing, that are striking our forces, and we will respond back, uh, but that should not impact hostage negotiations at all. All right, Sabrina Singh uh, from the Pentagon, truly thank you for your time today. We appreciate it. And I want to bring our big story now to our panel here. So joining us today is our ABC News contributor and Sirius XM radio host, Mike Muse, our ABC News contributor and former Republican Congresswoman for Virginia, Barbara Comstock, and ABC News political contributor and former Democratic U.S. Senator from North Dakota, Heidi Heitkamp, and ABC News senior Pentagon reporter, Louis Martinez. So, uh, Louis, let's start here with you. Uh, listen, we've heard from Sabrina a few times here today. I'm curious what your thoughts are there when she said, you know, they can't provide us with the timing or the places uh, in terms of which the U.S. could respond. But she did say they want to do it in the most impactful way and inflict the most cause. Louis, what do you make of that? Well, Kena, it all comes down to the presidential decision about what exactly what kind of strike options he's going to choose and essentially about what kind of repercussions could happen as a result mm -hmm. of those strikes. Remember, it may not be a just a military action. This is, could be a whole of government decision. It could be sanctions. It could be something else, something that we're not thinking of. I mean, I'm here at the Pentagon, and so you're asking me questions that will, will come up with answers for focusing on U.S. military responses. But it could be something completely different outside of this sphere. Um, but I think that right now what we need to know is exactly what time frame they're looking at and when they mm -hmm. say time and place of our choosing that means that they are making a very calculated decision and it also means that they have to get the, uh, the weapon systems in place if it's going to be something pretty significant. Wow all right and Heidi to you on that note what kind of caution do you think the Biden and the national security team are considering in terms of potentially a strike in Iran? Uh, what else could they be considering here? Well, I think all options are going to be on the table, but this is a, a reminder, stark reminder, losing three American lives that we have to get back to stopping politics at the water's edge and making sure that we are supporting our allies and that our allies are supporting us. And so um, a tragic, tragic situation, very, very dangerous time given the potential of escalation, but really important that the president not just rely on his own advisors, but that he bring in and encourage the Republican leadership um, to support the decisions that they're making and have a unified American statement. And Barbara, what's your take on that in terms of Republican leadership? We know Republican lawmakers are pushing the Biden administration to retaliate. So can the Biden administration count on bipartisan support for a retaliatory strike here? I, I do think particularly in the Senate, there's opportunity there and I, I certainly agree with Heidi that there's very much a need for that. You know, I think with Senator McConnell, Senator Romney, you know, Senator Risch, people who are uh, leaders on the national security front and wanting to uh, be supportive um, uh, with for the president um, on this and other issues. You know, these are difficult uh, needles to, for the president to thread. And even though the issues of this and um, and the Hamas issue are separate. Obviously, how you handle this is going to impact the other. Well, we have, you know, a ceasefire there. We want to make these things all work together. And Mike, we've now learned the names of the service members that were killed in this drone attack there in Jordan. And now we have the faces of these, you know, young service members. They've passed on. How does that change how Americans view this conflict and the escalation that we are seeing there in the Middle East? I think when you put names and faces to a conflict, uh, it, it resonates with the American public and it humanizes uh, the story and it humanizes the want for retaliation. Uh, when you were talking with Sabrina Singh just now, what stood out to me most is when she kept repeating to you, Kena, we own the clock. 
Uh, mm -hmm. The way she said that so resolute, uh, the way she was so calm about it, for me was an indicator that this administration has taken this attack serious and that there will be a response that is measured, but understanding the nuance and the difficulty of, one, not wanting to expand a regional conflict within the Middle East, Two, uh, not wanting to engage directly with Iran. Um, three, and its proxies, while understanding a response must be had. And so mm -hmm. uh, there was something about that we own the clock uh, that lets us know they're also too being very measured with the strategy. All right, but I, you, we know there are analysts that are concerned that that clock is in fact ticking. Uh, Mike, Barbara, Heidi, and Louie, our thanks to all of you. <laughs> Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.